you and me together. Together. Constant companions forever. Forever. Talking about things like weather or not. Oh, not. Take some time out of your week. Your week. Listen, and then you will see. Oh, you'll see. How much you enjoy our show. Or not. Or not. You're about to experience constant companions. Hello, and welcome to the Constant Companion Podcast. I am joined by Connor Orr and also by Wes the Best. How do you Hello. do? Oh, I like that. Today, we're going to be discussing something that's deep, dark, dirty, um, mostly because of the places which it usually is can be found. Today, we'll be talking about the monsters under your bed, in your closets, behind the shower curtains, in the woods while you take your weekly jog. And also in the movie theaters, sitting behind you as you eat your popcorn and drink your drinks. So welcome! Yeah, we're going to be talking about monsters today. Um, so yeah. <laughs> I think I think that's a great introduction to uh, this week's episode. I know for one, I've always had a, a massive fear of the undead myself as you probably know from one of our very first episodes where i talked about my fear of the zombie from the house of the dead arcade cabinet if you're interested in that you can go back to like episode one i think it is where i talk about it or you can look up the animation on youtube um but monsters uh wes i want to ask you first of all scariest monster that you are afraid of or something that maybe you're afraid of as a kid Oh, it doesn't necessarily have to be a, a uh, literal monster. It could be even something figurative. Oh, that's a good one. Um, well, just because it's the like the first thing that came to the top of my head, because I could probably give you like my like the one like I really am probably afraid of, but I can't think of one right now. So I'm just gonna. So I don't know if anyone's M Night Shyamalan fan, um, but everyone of course has to remember the classic signs. Mm-hmm. And you remember in the movie? Okay, so spoiler alert: if you if you haven't seen Signs, I mean it's not really a spoiler alert. It doesn't really affect the story at all. But uh, there's a scene where uh, Uncle Merrill is is he he's like in the in the little cubby hole underneath the stairs, and he's watching the news. And he right. see and he sees that he's like watching like live footage from that uh like little Mexican birthday party, <laughs> and that alien walks across like the, the screen mm-hmm. there at the corner yeah like so like, just like those like that portrayal of like aliens and stuff I just remember seeing that movie like and I was like eight or ten like I was like kind of mature like at that point, like it was like mm-hmm. at that age like where you should be like you know that's not really scary. But, like, even now, like, every now and then it kind of freaks me out. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, I have a little bit of an irrational fear of cornfields just because of that and because of, like, the scene, like, where you see the hand extended out. It's just, just, it it, it gives me the heebie-jeebies. Dude, Wes, I have to tell you, I think I may, we may have had this conversation in the past. I don't think it was on the podcast, though. I have a fear of that exact same scene, that exact moment with the Mexican birthday party and the alien walking by. And it's only on screen for like two seconds. And I think part of the reason it scared me so bad was because it reminded me the way that it like walked and looked. It reminded me for whatever reason of a redead from Zelda. And those things always freaked me out. And I used to have this Zelda, uh, like, instruction manual for Majora's Mask. And it had all these, like, depictions by the artist of the monsters from Zelda. And one of them was the Redead. And it always just freaked me out. And I always associate that scene with that image. And it's just like seeing it come to life. I was so scared. I used to cry when that scene would come on. I'd run out of the room if my parents were watching Signs when that scene would come on. And I was even older than you, dude. So what's that say about me? <laughs> I 
I still can't watch that scene without walking, without either either covering my eyes or walking out of the room. Um, it it is literally the most scariest scene I've ever seen in my entire life. And try when you're 12 years old watching it in the middle of the night with your friends at a sleepover, and then having your mother take you to a cornfield, drop you Ooh. off, drive away. And then you start walking through the cornfield and you stumble upon a homeless camp, which you interpret or think are aliens. What? What's that? Yes. Your mom. This is real. Your mom just dropped you off or somebody's mom dropped you off afterwards. And it was Mama Kennedy. It was Mama Kennedy. Why would she just leave you in a cornfield? That's just what she does. She (laughs) tries to make adventures for us. You guys just wandered into the cornfield, like, unsuspectingly into a homeless camp? <laughs> okay, that's the issue, though. That's the issue with, with, with being with your friends is they dare you to do things. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we were – I wasn't going to go in the cornfield, but then I got double dog dared to do it by one of Ooh. my best friends. And so no I that. did it. No, you you can't. can't. You can't say no to it. And so that's, that's what happened to me, and I can't watch it. I can't watch the scene anymore. Because it makes you think of homeless people. Homeless people and the the horrible experience. <laughs> so wait, okay. Tell me more about this camp when you got there. So you got there and you suspected they were aliens. We suspected they were aliens, um, but as we came closer, um, they all all the homeless people that were there in the middle of this cornfield scattered away, and all that was left is a bunch of broken beer bottles and a bunch of uh, cigarettes. So, oh, yeah. Interesting. So, so they I think put on they their, thought they put on they their thought we were aliens cloaks. They're no 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 devices. no no no. They just ran away because they probably thought either we were aliens or we were the the owner of the property coming out to shoot them or probably aliens poison them. Yeah. Dang, dude, that's gotta crazy. Be. Gotta be. I'm I'm trying to think if I ever had like an experience where I was. Ooh, I got one. Um, I used to be, okay, did you ever play the game? It was on the, well, first it was on the N64, Gauntlet. Like, it's an old game. Oh, like, they had arcade absolutely. versions of it, like the old Midway one. And then they came out with a new version called, like, Gauntlet Dark Legacy on, like, PS2 and GameCube. And they also had yep. one on GameCube, or on N64 called Gauntlet Legends. It was pretty much the same game, but up Anyhow, there are these bad guys in the game that you have to fight, and they're called deaths, just like death, but they're like personified to kind of look, they almost look Grim Grim Reaper-esque, and they stretch out their hand, and they suck your life from you, and they have like these glowing like green and red eyes, and once they get like 100 HP from you, they disappear, or you have to use a potion on them to make them disappear, and so I remember this one year we went, uh, it was Halloween, and I was always terrified of deaths from Gauntlet because it meant that they were going to suck your life away. And so we uh, got to this one house when we were trick-or-treating, and it was all these people dressed up like Grim Reapers. And, of course, I associate Grim Reaper-like people with deaths from, from um, uh, uh, Gauntlet. And so what's even more terrifying is we go there, and they just kind of stand around the candy bowl – Like, they look like they're all part of a cult standing in formation with their heads bowed down. And it's ominous candlelight. We take a piece of candy, and it seems everything's fine and good. But the moment we walk over to the car, they start chasing us. With And they have giant no. scythes. And here's the thing. They did this with, like, all the kids. So we were freaked out. I got into the back of the car, and, of course... Our aunt and uncle who are driving the the car, they know it's a joke. They know it's a prank. So they start driving really slow so that they can chase us for a little bit and we can freak out because we're all sitting in the trunk. None of us are actually sitting in our, like, seats with our seatbelts on. We're all sitting in the trunk with the trunk open, and we're just letting them chase us down the street, and we're screaming bloody murder. We're like, Uncle John, step on it. They can reach us with their scythe. And so we thought something, like... Our uncle was stupid or something for not realizing what was going on. But we weren't in that these guys were fake. Because when it's Halloween, for whatever reason, everything just becomes real. So that – and I was I was terrified by that. That, like, scarred me forever to the point where I was, like – I was so afraid of, like, Grim Reaper 
Grim Reapers and deaths and everything. I just I put it all into the same category. Yeah, there's a, there's a quote by uh, Martin Luther King Jr. It says, when Halloween comes around, the goblins and demons come to town. <laughs> so do you have a totally justifiable fear? <laughs> Is that what he said? Oh, my god. Yeah, gosh. it was my friend Martin Luther. Oh, gotcha. Okay. That Martin Luther. Dang. Who are you thinking of? I don't, I don't know. I'm not going to go into detail. Uh, it was just a common mistake, I think. So let's talk about this. There's lots of scary monsters. We're going to look at some scary monsters that people think really exist. Because the thing about these monsters we've talked about is we've kind of come to the point in our lives where we realize these monsters are either fake or or we don't have substantial enough evidence to be able to prove their existence. However, according to this article from Mental Floss, thank you, Mental Floss, uh, there are seven scary monsters that some people think actually exist, and we're going to discuss them today specifically. So let's take a look at what these monsters could possibly be. And if you're interested, we'll link it so that you can see the article for yourself and follow along. So the first one we're going to talk about is one – I've first of all, I don't think I've heard of any of these monsters. I looked through this article and they seem like they're indigenous to a very specific area, mostly of the United States. First, I want to bring this up. Tell me how terrifying this sounds just from its name. Number one, the skunk ape. That's 100% terrifying. That's 100% it sounds- real too. That's is it is it do they have a picture of it at all? Uh they had they have a picture at the top. I think that's the skunk ape at the top. I could that's be the wrong. Skunk ape? That's uh, disgusting. May, oh, maybe if it's something him. else. Well, let's let's read about them. Uh it says these stinky monsters could be lurking mostly anywhere from the south, but have a particular tendency to pop up in Florida. You better watch out, Wes. Don't you have like, a summer home down there? Well, uh, I don't think anyone has a summer home down in Florida, but yeah, we have a house down there in Florida. The skunk ape is a seven-foot-tall behemoth that looks like that looks something like a gorilla, but his truly distinguishing feature is his awful smell. Skunk ape sightings date back to the 1940s, and in 2000, Sarasota Sheriff's Department even received an anonymous letter containing several pictures of a smelly ape wandering around in the night and then it says uh sorry i gotta go back up uh while the national park service has dismissed the existence of skunk apes as a myth the service says the sightings are probably just a guy in a gorilla suit who might end up getting himself shot (laughs) local residents remain adamant that the fragrant primates occasionally appear to terrorize their pets just their pets not them that's what I was about to say. This thing's like seven feet tall. Why would it only be attacking pets? It's an animal hater. It's a discriminator. It must be. He's fine with humans, but he doesn't. He 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 just is very racist against animals. Okay, we're going to take a vote out of the three of us. Majority rules. Is skunk ape real? I say nay. I say nay. I say yay because it sounds like Bigfoot, so he's real. <laughs> majority rules he is not real all right i respect that but dallas can believe as much as he wants i'll tell you what next the only skunk oh sorry ape, go ahead west the only skunk ape you're gonna see in florida is me after i hit like homer's all you can eat buffet and i'm just like it hit me it like hits me hard all right now we can go to number two or the or or the homeless people too oh the homeless people too <laughs> so this next one's really interesting because it actually is a depiction. It's not a photo. It's a, it looks like a really crude drawing of whatever this is. It's, it looks like a platypus. For those who are listening, which I guess would be everybody, it looks like it has a platypus-type head with the body of, like, a frog. Yep. Is that how you guys would describe it? That, that's what I'm seeing right now, like a frog, like a frog goat. I don't know. It's hard to... Oh. Yeah, it's hard to describe it precisely, uh, but yeah. we're going to read it. Uh, the Dover Demon 
in spring of 1977, three different teenagers had encounters with an odd humanoid creature over the span of two days. The creature, which was later dubbed the Dover Demon, was supposedly around four feet tall with glowing orange eyes, a watermelon-shaped head, and long, thin fingers. Kind of like salad fingers. The Dover Demon disappeared after those two days, and he hasn't been seen since. Some skeptics dismiss the stories because of the witnesses' young ages, while others think the teens may have seen a moose foal. The witnesses remain adamant that they saw the bizarre creature. Williams Bartlett, who went on to become a successful painter, still maintains that he saw something weird and even wrote on his sketch of the demon, I, Bill Bartlett, swear on a stack of Bibles that I saw this creature. (laughs) doesn't count it doesn't count if it's a stack of bibles oh really Just on one bible yep is that like That's crossing blasphemy. your is that kind of like crossing your fingers yep exactly exactly court of law won't accept that gotcha what about you wes what do you idea. think <laughs> oh if it's real or not yeah, yeah i'm saying nay I'm saying nay. I do like the theory that it's a moose foal, though. I don't know what kind of moose foal has a watermelon-shaped head and long fingers, but that's apparently what people chalked it up to be. All right, so I'm I guess... Gonna I'm going to vote. No, 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 no. I need to give my opinion. Okay. I'm voting yes. You think it's real? On the drawing alone, because of how detailed the drawing is. I don't think someone can make that up. I think that has to be well, an image that's from their brain. To be honest, the picture like that's drawn on there, like not gonna lie, it looks like what happens when like a sperm meets the egg. It's just like just sprouting into like it's just the dimensions just don't work. First of all, how, how's he able to walk? He doesn't have any thumbs. He just has four fingers. That's true. That's true. Good observations. Good observations. And also, where's What's his mouth What's this other at? photo? Because they, oh, you see the picture in the back? There's some text around it that they didn't highlight in the actual article. It's a skin texture of a cheek? shark. Oh, shark. shark? Is that what that is? I thought it said cheek. Church? Skin color. The color of... I can't read that. In the people... On the Sunday. If the people in the survey comics. Sunday comics. Oh, in the Sunday comics. Size about the size of a monkey. Eyes glowed orange color. Wow. You're right. There's no way that's not not real. It says here, I Bill Bartler. Oh, that was the thing where he swore on the stack of Bibles. Us that I saw this. If you guys want to check this out again, we have the link in the uh, podcast so you can check out this website. Uh, let's go to number three. Champ sounds like the like a little kid or something, like a nickname. Uh, Champ is a Lake Champlain. 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 Champ is Lake Champlain's answer to the Loch Ness monster. Ever since a railroad crew first reported spotting the head of an enormous serpent sticking out of the water in 1819, reports of a long-necked sea monster have been coming out of Lake Champlain. In the 1880s, P.T. Barnum even offered $50,000 reward to anyone who could bring up the champ dead or alive. Uh, bring in the champ dead or alive. And even though many tried to collect the bounty, none succeeded. Although there have been over 300 reports of champ sightings, including some by law enforcement officials and entire crews of ships, scientists have not been able to prove champ exists. It's true. It's real. I, I'm calling BS. No! And I'm, also, I'm also calling BS on whoever names these... Um, these characters <laughs> that okay. is a pretty awful name champ in champlin's lake uh nessie and lake net or is it lake nessie or like what's it what's the, what's the lake loch ness what's the, the lake lake loch ness whatever i don't know what it's called and then there's also one in my hometown of lake city minnesota um we live off the lake off lake pepin 
And guess what they named the supposed monster in there? Pepin. Peppy. Peppa Pig. That's terrible. Pe- Kids it's are terrible. gonna want to go play with terrible. the monster. Exactly. This is this is this is getting out of hand. They need to come up with better names. This is fake. I'm calling it. Yeah, it's say, dangerous. Like, and I think. Sorry, go ahead, Wes. Oh no, I was just saying, like, like Champ, like, like you said, like it's just like a name you just like associate with. Like, it just makes you want to like say, like, hey, come on, Champ, let's go outside and throw the old pig skin around. You know. Yeah, sport. I don't want to catch you. I just wanna. I just wanna hang out with you, Champ. I, it, that's what I'm thinking, Wes, and I think that's what makes it so dangerous, is somebody could say, yeah, you ever hear a champ who lives out in uh, the Champlin Lake? And all the kids are going to be like, whoa, I want to hang out with a guy named Champ. And they're all going to go swimming, and they're all going to get eaten by Champ. And I think that would be a reason for concern. And I think the idea that law enforcement even – was like seeing this and reporting it. Those guys wouldn't mess around. I think Champ is real. What do you think, Wes? You're the determining factor. Oh, I'm gonna have to say nay. Oh, that hurts. You betrayed. I know. Betrayed the alliance. All right, we're gonna read. We'll read one more. There's a bunch more on here, but we're just gonna do four today. How's that sound? That's what I was about to say. Sounds good. I was gonna say four, okay. four sounds like the most real. Let let me just can I say something real quick? Go for so it. There's one on there's one on here called the Jersey Devil, mm-hmm. um, and I just want to say he is real. Um, how, do you guys remember the show Fact or Faked Paranormal Files? Yes. I uh, no. It was on Sci Fi. It started like in 2010, I think. Um, okay. But they basically did all did experiments. They're like the MythBusters, basically of paranormal things, and. They did one on the Jersey Devil, and they found out that he is, or she is, or it is real. So that's wanna, all I gotta how say. About we, how about we read the Jersey Devil, then? Are you sure? Yeah. Where is it? Oh, shoot, man. He looks cool. Yeah. He's he's, way, he's like, half, like half goat, half horse, half bird or something. Do you want to read the, the – why don't you read the uh, the description of it? Okay, the Jersey Devil. This one's significantly more terrifying than New Jersey Devil's goalie Martin Broder. Ooh, although good Although the monstrous <laughs> dad joke. Also, although the monstrous local legend did lend his name to the hockey team, as the story goes, in the early 18th century, a poor woman named Mother Leeds proclaimed, "Let this one be a devil," while giving birth to her 13th child only to have the curse come true. The child emerged with hooves, leathery, leather, le- leathery wings, horns, and sharp claws, killed the midwives, and began flying around wreaking havoc. The legend has certainly had staying power, although 200 years later, the devil became a big deal again in 1909. Or... Yeah, 1909. That January, reports of odd footprints being around in the snow on the roof of houses caused such a panic that the devil was up to no good that mills and schools closed after workers and students were too terrified to leave their homes. Since then, the Jersey Devil has received the credit and blame for all sorts of things, hap- strange things happening around the Garden State. Lose a cow? The devil probably flew off with it. Heard a weird noise? The devil naturally. In 1960, Camden's merchants off, even offered a $10,000 bounty to anyone who could capture the mysterious, mischievous flying devil, but they never found any takers. I guess I, the real question is, would you uh, go out and try to find the devil for $10,000? I was just about to say that. I think that is our next challenge. Our next weekly well, you, challenge. I, you guys, or, or Wes is actually closer than us there, so I think this needs to be his challenge. Yeah, if Wes he has time. I mean, I can. I mean, ten thousand dollars. I could. I could. I'd sure like to pay off some of my student loans. Not gonna lie, <laughs> dude. It's still up there. You could take out a devil, 
Plus, you would get the moniker of being a demon slayer. Ooh. You'd probably be one of the few people in the modern day and age who could actually say that. And you would get $10,000 for taking him out. And he sounds like a little ugly. I was about to call him a devil as an insult, but I just realized, oh, he is a devil. <laughs> so, yeah. But <laughs> you, there's nothing saying you couldn't just take out the New Jersey's devil the New Jersey Devils goalie. I was about to say, I mean, because we've seen them in real life. We know that they're, they can be scary, but. That's true. But, but they're, you could just paint them red, put a tail on them. We'll just stick the Washington Capitals on them. <laughs> Dude, that would be a good way of dealing with it. Or our friend Lauren after dealing with her boss. That's true. So, you heard it here, guys. We're going to catch them. Don't worry. Anybody who's listening from New Jersey, have no fear, no fret, no fretting. All right. We're going to take a break from that. So, oh, did we determine if it was fake or real? I think we determined it was real I think without we can question. All, yeah, determine it's real. 100% real. 100% real. I think, it's, I think it's a good way to transition into our next segment. For those of you who don't remember or weren't listening last week, Wes or sorry, Dallas and I had a weekly challenge. Wes was not present for the episode, so we don't hold him accountable for this. Where we had to come up with a song. And the song had to be it could either be a cappella, it could be something we write. The only rule was the song had to somehow incorporate some sort of monster into the song for this week so (laughs) without further ado we're going to check in on dallas to see how his how his why don't you give me a little explanation as to how you came up with the idea for your song and then we'll just listen to the song okay so for my song my real inspiration came from the monsters out there's out there who are cannibals okay they're the real monsters um along with like pedophiles rapists things like that okay cannibals are out there they're real they're eating our children they're eating our wives hide your kids hide your wives hide your husbands they're eating everybody out here okay and so for what i did and where i got my my musical inspiration from was uh, was from aaron carter's song um originally performed by the Bow Wow Wows. Um, I Wait, want it candy. was originally performed by somebody else. Yes, by the Bow Wow Wows. I knew it, and I was having a conversation with my sister like two months ago, and we were having an argument about this, and she thought I was stupid for thinking I Want Candy was originally a song by somebody else. She was like, no, only and- Aaron Carter did it. I was like, I knew it was somebody else. Sorry. No, that's BS, because the Bow Wows, the, the lead singer was a woman singing it to a man. And so it was originally about a man, but then Aaron Carter made it towards a woman. And if you look at really look at the lyrics, um, you can tell just how messed up it is. Even without me doing a parody of it, it's still about cannibalism. I want candy. She's so sweet. She tastes so good. Yada, yada, yada. That's cannibalism. Aaron Carter's a cannibal calling it right now. Let me introduce my song, though. It's called I Want Mandy. Um, it's about this guy who buys this girl named Mandy. He sees her. He's like, oh, she's so sweet. Something good to eat. <laughs> and and so he buys her and cooks her and eats her and shares it with her friends. So that's that's my song, and I'm sticking to it. Ladies and gentlemen, I want Mandy. This is a good intro. Uh. Uh, the phone's ringing. Is that Mandy? Hey, Justin. Hey, Justin. hey it's Alice. I can't come out tonight. I'm going to eat this girl. No, I... <laughs> no. Her name is Mandy. This, this, voice o- this video is great. I gotta go. See ya. I know a girl who's tough but sweet. Her skin's so fine she can't be beat. 
She's got everything, so I buy her. Sets the hot dog bun on fire. Sets the dog on fire? I want Mandy. I want I Mandy. I want the kids in the background. I want Mandy. It sounds like they're saying it. I want Mandy. Go to eat her when the sun goes down. <laughs> Ain't no finer girl in town. You're my girl with the witch doc order. <laughs> so sweet, make my mouth water. <laughs> Did you say you're the girl the witch doctor ordered? I want candy. <laughs> yeah. I want I candy. I want candy. <laughs> I think you're just saying candy now. I tried covering it at that point. Hey, hey. That's hilarious. Hey. Yum. I'm still hey, listening. I'm about halfway. Yeah. Hey. 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 Manny on the peach, you can't forget her. But I like Manny wrapped in a feather. <laughs> Someday soon I'll make you grind. Then I'll have Mandy all the time. I want Mandy. I love that how how some of these lyrics don't make any sense. That's my favorite. I want Mandy. I want Mandy. I want Mandy. I want Mandy. Mandy in the medium prime, Mandy in the hot blush wine. Mandy, can't you see? All I want is you. Mandy, wow, yours is gonna be way better than mine. Medium prime, Mandy in the hot blush wine. Mandy, baby, can't you see? All I want is your Mandy. Thank you. All I want is your Mandy. All I want is your Mandy. Michael Scott of Perry. Very end. Did you All like is you candy? That was good. Did you like at the very end the candy in the medium prime? No! That's what I thought you were saying. Stupid! What? I meant medium rare. Oh! Is medium <laughs> prime a thing? I don't think it's so. Like, there's <laughs> subprime, like subprime meats. There's prime, and then there's like. So you yeah. can just. <laughs> medium I meant medium rare. <laughs> I was wondering what. Okay. Well, it's well, too late. It's already up there, so. I'm going to do my song live. Oh, yeah. So, okay, let me give you a little context for this song. Have you okay. ever heard the song Jungle Boogie? Yes. It goes. The song has like two lyrics throughout the whole song. It's just. Um. Get down, get down. And then the other lyric is Django Boogie, Django Boogie. And that's it. Those are all the lyrics of the song. So I decided I was going to do my own rendition live of the song. I'll be playing the music on my iPhone. I hope you can hear it. I'll hold it close to the microphone so that you guys can hear it. And I'm going, this song is going to feature. The Munsters, if you remember the old, like, 1960s uh, TV oh, yeah. show. Good old Herman Munster. So, yeah, I'm going to replace some of the lyrics with uh, the Munsters. <laughs> Who's ready? Can I'm I ready. get a hype check? Hype! All right, here we go. Get ready. Oh, wait, let's restart. Restart. Sorry. I screwed it up. It's all right. We forgive you. Herman Monster. Herman Monster. Herman Monster. Herman Monster. Herman Monster. Lily Monster. Lily Monster. Lily Monster. 
Easter special in 1965. Pat Priest was in the show from 1964 to 1966. And Beverly Owen was on the show only in 1964, though. Herman Monster! Lily Monster. I you get the point. I was reading from <laughs> the Wikipedia page. Wait, what? You were just reading the I was Wikipedia just reading page? From the Wikipedia page. <laughs> I'm going to continue now. <clears throat> Herman Monster. Lily Monster. Weird Vampire Kid. Lily Monster. Herman Monster. The Monsters is an American sitcom depicting the home life of a family of B9 monsters starring Fred Gwine as Frankenstein's monster, type head of the household Herman monster. That's it. That's the song. Wow. I just gave you the first sentence of the <laughs> Wikipedia page. That was beautiful. You're welcome. I spent a lot of time, as you can tell, preparing that. Yeah, I'm sorry, Dallas. That was better than yours. <laughs> Dang it! It just... I don't know. Like, it just... It had more creative juices flowing through it. Like, the the, the lyrics were real smart. Like, it told a good mm-hmm. story. It rhymed. Yeah, yours was kind of dry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, bow down, Screw please. You. Uh, I mean, good work. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it was good. It's it's like that chicken you get at Chipotle. Like, I mean, it's still, like, good and stuff, but it's not as, like, juicy and, you know, like what you might like out of, like, KFC's chicken like Connor's was today. Yeah, mine had, like, a really heavy dosage of, like, Wikipedia sauce on top of it. <laughs> and a lot of Herman Munster repeated over and over again. <laughs> but like I said, the entire song, the original Jungle Boogie is, like, two lyrics. It's just, get down, get down, get down, and then, jungle boogie, jungle boogie. So, I think I did a pretty good job. Herman Monster. Herman All right, Monster. let's take a vote. Let's take a vote. Okay. Um, t- all seriousness, though, Dallas, your song was freaking amazing. Even, uh, even, with, this, even with the medium prime. <laughs> that was freaking hilarious. I'll yeah. have to do a, a, a remix of it and put put it as medium rare at the end. At some point, I have to actually record my Munsters song. I think I need oh, to absolutely. do that before Halloween. And then I can actually... Happen. I'll just do the entire Wikipedia article. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So that was our weekly challenge. You know what? I don't even know if we came up with a, a weekly challenge for next week have we i don't think so we'll have to think um, about it by the end of the episode unless you yeah. have one no let's 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 yeah let's think i'll, th- I'll tell you at the end okay since you, since you came up with that one i'll come up with a new one all right we're gonna go to the next segment this was suggested by wes this is <laughs> maybe one of our more controversial games we've ever played on the podcast (laughs) there is a more vulgar uh version of this game and the vulgarity is still present however we just kind of changed one of the words up the game is called marry screw or kill (laughs) wherein you have to marry one screw (laughs) one and kill one now here's the thing you can interpret screw however you want you know how some people say, screw you? That kind of means, well, that kind of still means the same thing as the other word. I, I think, I think in, in the derogatory term, sense. In the term, uh, or in the topic of horror, we're going to interpret screw as, as screwing screws in somebody. <laughs> okay. If that's, that's even okay. better. If so that's better. Because <laughs> it works. Because you know how Frankenstein has the bolts in his oh, head? Oh, that's true. Yep. Yeah. So, so, so I think it should, be marry, it should be marry, screw, kill. Screw could be like torture. Marry, torture, okay. or kill. 
Is that I good? gotcha. That, I like it. So screw means torture. Okay. Wink, means wink. Torture. Wink, wink. Okay. So we're going to start out with our first... Th- and these are all monsters, by the way, that we're going to be talking about. Monsters from pop culture uh, or generic monsters. So the first one is Dracula, Frank, a.k.a. Frankenstein. I just thought I would give him the courtesy of referring to him as an actual, you know, acceptable name. Dracula, Frank, or the werewolf? What, let's start out with Wes. Mary, screw, kill. Dracula, Frankenstein, and werewolf. Mm-hmm. Well, probably going to kill Frankenstein. I don't know, just not, you know. How are you going to kill him? Fire? That's what he's scared of, right? Or a ham sandwich. Either or. There you um, go. I'm thinking screw Dracula and marry the werewolf. Ooh, good choice. I mean, let's be honest. Werewolves, you know, they're kind of related to canines, and canines are good cuddle buddies when it's like a cold winter's night. Ooh, yeah, that's true. So wait, did you did you marry the werewolf? Yeah. Or Dracula? Okay. Oh, you screwed Dracula. Yeah. Okay. Uh, With a wooden for... steak. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so that's what you call it. Okay. Um, I'm... That's what she said. Uh, okay. I'm going to marry. I'm going to marry Dracula. I like his style. Um, I think. I'm going to screw the werewolf and I'm going to kill Frank. Sorry. Dallas, what about you? Kill werewolf because he probably has the easiest time overpowering me um, and taking my money. Um, So I'm going to kill the werewolf so he doesn't have that opportunity. Uh, Screw Dracula for obvious Mm -hmm. reasons and then marry frank because frank's not that smart and i can manipulate him into working for me and providing for me heck yeah dude you know that's that's so smart so frank's your sugar mama or your sugar sugar daddy daddy. he rakes in the dough he rakes in the dough performing at the freak Freak show (laughs) herman monster bringing home the dough okay uh Next, we have these are the three next monsters Swamp Monster, Octo Mom. You guys remember Octo yeah. Mom? Wait, is this? Is I just this thought, the, is this? Yeah. I always thought Octo Mom sounded like an octopus monster. So, I mean, I she? always thought that. And I just kind of was like, eh, interpret it as you will. Uh, and a zombie. Let's start out again with Wes. Okay, kill Octo Mom. Uh, screw the zombie, and I think I'm gonna marry the swamp monster. Mmm, I like it. Uh, I would have to say the the zombie you can't really kill because it's already dead. Exactly. So I guess I'm I'm screwing the zombie. Uh, I'm going to. Uh, you know what? I'll marry Octomom. It's oh, female. Dude. And I can have eight kids to carry on my legacy, assuming... Well, she already has eight kids, so they're not Oh, kids. that's true. Well, I'll have eight more kids. That she continues to have eight kids. Ooh. And they'll have octopus features. They'll be able to squirt ink. Uh, and like I said, I'll kill the swamp monster... <laughs> Uh, I hate fish. Dude, so. don't kill my wife. He'll make good seafood. She'll make. He'll make. I don't know. Whatever you want it to be. Okay. For me, number one, kill Swamp Monster. When I think of Swamp Monster, I think of Old Greg. Do you guys remember Old Greg? Do you know Old Greg? I don't think so. Nah. I'm Old Greg! 
It's from it's from um, the BBC. Oh, it's like a BBC comedy show. It's really funny, but it's really weird. If you have time, go watch it. But I would kill the Swamp Monster or Old Greg. Um, screw Octo Mom. No, no, no. I would screw the zombie because putting a screw in his head is going to kill him anyhow. And then um, marry Octo Mom because she is a woman. Oh, okay. that's, that's true. We forgot about that part. <laughs> I think she's the only uh, intended or like inferred female on this list. So <laughs> pretty much no matter what, we're all gay for whatever these monsters are. Uh, okay, good work. Next one. Um, well, technically not. All of these things are pretty much gender neutral, so it could be whatever. Uh, whatever your preference is, I'm not going to judge. because most of them reproduce through the mouth. Um, werewolves bite someone, become a werewolf, Dracula, vampire bite oh, okay, someone, yeah. That's true. That's actually true. Yeah. For a second, I was so confused. Um, okay. Uh, the next one, we have Ghost, Headless Horseman. I guess that one's inferred to be a man, but it could be a horsewoman, I guess, if you want it to be. Uh, ghost, Headless Horseman, and a Chupacabra. That's Spanish for Monster. Of is Mexico. it? Yeah, it's a Mexican word. Well, I know it's like a Mexican monster, but I didn't know. I'm just kidding. I have no idea Screw what it you. means. Screw All right. I'll link it up while Wes comes up with it. I think I'm going to kill the ghost. Um, I'm thinking marry the headless horseman and eat the chalupa. Okay. Eat the chalupa. Uh, or sorry, the, found... the Chupa Cabra. Yeah. Uh, apparently it's an animal said to... Oh. It just means animal that attacks the animals? Okay. Yeah. So it's I... like a can. It's a cannibal, but animal. Yeah. It's an sorry, animal what, cannibal. What were you doing with the Chupa Cabra? Eating it? Yeah, well... you oh. could. I guess I would be killing it, right? Yeah. Okay. You can eat it. I don't mess around with any chupacabras. Hmm, I see. What about, uh, oh, I guess it's me. Uh, ooh, okay. I gotta kill the ghost, because if I kill the ghost, even though it's impossible, I'd be considered a ghostbuster. And then that theme song would apply to me. <laughs> oh, so true. I could play it as much as I want. Uh, I would... Mm, I would screw the chupacabra because I would love to catch one and torture it and say that I did that and then it inevitably escape and then me have no evidence that I had it in containment. Um, and then I guess I have to marry the headless horseman, which is cool. That means I can just kind of imagine whatever head I wanted to have or I could just go and get somebody else's head and put it on. I mean, and they'd be forced to be mine. I mean, he's a good listener. Yeah, doesn't, that's true. Doesn't talk out of place. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's. I'm glad I married the headless horseman now. Knows his place. <laughs> um, I'd marry the chupacabra, cuddle buddy. Um, <laughs> sc- screw the headless horseman. Um, for obvious reasons, and then. Mar- or kill the ghost because like you said be a ghostbuster um also if i feel like if you kill a ghost it helps them pass on to heaven you know what i'm saying like they're stuck in this little mm-hmm. tiny world or prison and it helps them move on and go to the light you know yeah you're so just doing like missionary work ghost. i'm just Quick. i'm just saving lives here here's a riddle for you dallas so there are two songs that you would be able to play if you killed a ghost. One is the Ghostbusters theme song. What is the other one that I'm thinking of? Think of things that kill ghosts. Herman Monster. Ooh, that's a you can play that anytime though, the my song. <laughs> oh, is, this, is this really a riddle? Okay, just give me a hint. Um he's yellow. And he's not a Simpson. Chuck E. Cheese. Um, SpongeBob. Ooh. 
lives in a he only under makes the sea. he only makes one sound effect. Ow, 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 ow. That's a really bad impression of the sound effect, though. Pikachu. Um, You're getting closer. Video game. Yes. I'm thinking video game. He eats. In he eats. Pac-Man. 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 You're right. You could play the Pac-Man theme song. Okay. Sorry, <laughs> that was way off topic. Uh, next, uh, this is the last one for a Mary Screw Kill. Um, okay, so we've got Squatch, aka Sasquatch, Giant Spider. You could think like Shelob or something from like Lord of the Rings, uh, and an alien. I'm just thinking of like the stereotypical big-headed alien. Yeah, we're talking like just has, like the alien. Yeah. Here. Um. So, Wes, you start us off. Well, Alien's dead. I can already tell you that right now. <laughs> um, I'm thinking screw the giant spider and Mary Sasquatch. I mean, the guy's packing jerky like crazy. Heck yeah, dude. I've seen the commercials, yeah. I know. If he's anything like uh, Bigfoot from Harry and the Hend- Hendersons, he's got to be really nice. Too. Oh, so that's such treats, a good he movie. He treats you right. He treats you right. That's that's true. We don't know the personality of any of these figures. All these things are just suspected that they're evil. They could all be nice. Uh, I'm definitely killing the spider. There's no way you're going to get me to marry a spider. So I think I'm going to screw Sasquatch, steal his jerky while I'm screwing him. <laughs> and as in torturing. Uh and alien i'm gonna marry simply because if i marry him um i can go to outer space right i will be able to have an intergalactic marriage first one in our history and i would be able to start intergalactic world peace between the earth and the aliens or intergalactic war you know what it's worth the risk respect that you know what connor i kind of am am really disappointed in you because the last two times you've stolen my answers and given the exact explanations that i was going to give i would obviously i would obviously marry the alien so i can travel space but also so i can be taught a higher order of of intelligence um and also a higher order of intimacy and a higher order (laughs) of um just a way of living, you know? And I think I think an alien could bring me that. Unless this alien is just a nasty little monster who just happened to fly from an asteroid to this this Earth um, and is really just a big giant jerk. I don't know. I don't know, but I love him anyhow. Or her anyhow. Number two, I would torture the giant spider because all spiders deserve to be tortured because they Absolutely. are horrible, horrible, horrible... Uh, beings third I would kill Sasquatch um, because most likely if I'm encountering a Sasquatch I'm out in the middle of the the forest and I'm probably trapped out there so I would use him for (laughs) warmth and I would use him for meat I would cut his stomach open like in Star Wars oh yeah slip inside of him and then I would Mm -hmm. use his meat afterwards and eat it I was just he's just made of jerky yep so you're welcome. Dang, dude. Well, uh, we're getting close to the very end of the podcast. This has been an interesting episode. A lot of discussion. A lot of uh, talking back and forth. A lot of fun. Uh, but we're going to close out. Well, Dallas, did you ever come up with that uh, idea for a weekly challenge? Um, yes, I'm going to give it to you in a second. Okay, I'm going to go through this. Halloween ideas. Wes wanted us to add this to the show. Do we have any ideas as to what we're going for Halloween? Did you have an idea, Wes? No, that's why I was I was trying to figure out some good ideas because Halloween falls under a Tuesday. I want to say. Ooh, that's a bad day for me. Yeah, t- I don't think I'm gonna yeah, be Tuesday's out. Tuesday's the thirty first. Yeah. But let's say theoretically we could go as anything. Okay. No holds bar. Uh, I think I would go as I was going to go as Speed Racer last year 
but I never did because I didn't celebrate Halloween last year. So I didn't go as Speed Racer. So I would really love to live out that fantasy and buy a Mach 5 if I had the money and just to show it off. And I'd have the cool little polo and the yellow ascot. That would be me. What about you, Wes? If you could be anything. Um, actually, so like I said, um, I've, I've been like really into sitcoms. So I just started How I Met Your Mother, and I've been I've been thinking because like I love '80s stuff. Um, of like, what would be a cool '80s person to dress up as, or whatever. So in the one episode, Barney dressed up as a uh, Maverick from Top Gun, and I thought that would be a cool costume idea. Ooh, yeah. Especially if you could get someone with a good mustache, you know, to be your get goose. Get the jumpsuit. Yeah. Dang, dude, that's a that's a great choice. Also, of course, and be a- Classic Link is an also a, one I'd like classic to try. Classic Link yeah. from Zelda? Mm-hmm. That would be an interesting one. What about you, Dallas? If you could dress up as anything, what would you be? Um, if I could dress up as anything, I would be Dwight Schrute from The Office. And I Ooh. did dress up as him um, during my, uh, I don't know, I probably in high school. We went trick-or-treating in high school just because we, we needed free candy. Um, and I dressed up as, as Dwight one night. So, Fantastic. You do what you got to do. Dwight. You do what you got to do so you can be who you want to be. Mm-hmm. So you can expect Speed Racer, Maverick, or Link, and Dwight to be trick-or-treating together this Halloween. Theoretically, if we lived in the same neighborhood and we're still the appropriate age to go trick-or-treating. But we're going to stick it to the man anyhow and do it. Uh, I think that's about going to do it. Uh, Dallas, I want to check in with you. Yep. about that weekly challenge what you got all right so today we talked a lot a bit about a lot about fears and we specifically mentioned our fear of cornfields and aliens okay so for this challenge that i'm going to issue to all three of us you must go to a cornfield slash or abandoned house slash or something really scary and you must stay there um, for at least five minutes in the middle of the night. And then Ooh. take a picture. And then take a picture and bring it back. What do you guys think? Is there anything we should add to it, take away, change? Go. Um, I've got to find a cornfield near me. I know I'm in the middle of rural Idaho, so like there's tons. I just have to find one. But... I know West definitely has cornfields in Pennsylvania. Oh, man. Absolutely. Do we have cornfields? How long do we have to stay in it? Five minutes. Um, at least five minutes. And if you are so inclined, you'll get extra points um, if you watch on your phone the scene from Signs while you're in the middle of a cornfield. <laughs> no, no. Yes! No. Nope. Yes. I cannot. Absolutely. You, okay. It's, just, it's optional. This? You get extra points if you do. How about this? You get you get five extra points if you watch signs, right? But yep. if you have sufficient proof that you were there for the five minutes, like a video, five minutes of you just in there, that can also work. But you have to at least sing the Herman Munster song for like a minute. Just it doesn't have to be loud. You just have Ooh. to kind of Herman Herman Monster dinner dinner Herman Monster. You just kind of gotta sing it quiet to yourself, and you can also get those. Yep. Points. But I really like the idea of watching signs in the cornfield. I will. All right, are y'all game? Do it. I'm okay. doing it. And we'll, by we'll, next we'll... episode. Get a picture, get proof, and we'll post it to our, our Instagram page um, so we have proof and so everybody can know that we actually did it. If only I could record myself while watching the scene from Signs in the middle of a cornfield at night. Bring a second phone. Bring a second phone. Or I wish I, that would be nice. 
if I had one. Have a friend come. I don't know. Maybe Make I'll bring my maybe I'll bring my laptop, open it, have the video saved on my hard drive, watch it, and I'll record myself sitting in the cornfield watching it. Yes, I approve. That'd be hilarious. Do okay, it. we're doing it. It's official. Okay, okay. I'm I'm game if you're all right. Game. We Let's also we all have to swear to it. We have to swear to it that we're either gonna do one or the other thing. Okay. I, just to clarify, it doesn't have to be in a cornfield. It can be in an abandoned house, something scary, okay? Something okay. you wouldn't normally go to. Just because right. cause I don't know if I have cornfields around here. <laughs> gotcha. But, yeah. Okay. I swear on my life I will do that by next episode. All right. Let's all repeat it. I swear on my life that I will do it. On a stack of Bibles. On a stack of Bibles. There we go. <laughs> what was that guy's name? Tim Tim something? It was like Bill Tim. something. Oh, Bill. It was like Bill Bolchevsky, I Bill think. Bill Burgundy. Bill Burnham. Bill something Bartler. Like that. Bartler. That was it. Bill. All right, guys. That's going to do it for this episode. Thanks, you guys, for tuning in. Next week again, we will continue with the theme of horror. Look forward to the end of this month where we will be having a very special guest, Colby Wilson of the Red Rum Podcast. Uh, it's a podcast where they watch scary movies, they drink a little bit, and they talk about those movies. So we're going to have him come on the podcast where we will all have probably watched some sort of film or we'll just have a general discussion about horror movies in general. But it's going to be a fun discussion. Look forward to that. That will probably be the last week of this month. Uh, we hope that you guys have enjoyed this episode. If you have, you can subscribe to us on iTunes. You can also check us out on Stitcher or on our website. Um, you can also email us at constantcompodcast at gmail.com if you're interested in coming on. Um, if you have any questions, you can also comment or ask us in person on our Facebook page. There's all sorts of ways to contact us. So we just want to thank you guys for tuning in and hope that we can uh, have you listen to us next week. Thanks again, guys. All right. Scare you. Would you like to be my friend? Sure. Woohoo! I got some new friends. Intelligent people leading troublemaker. No, I'm just an ordinary zombie who enjoys knitting clothes for my monster friends. Oh no, here we go. Walking through the haunted house. Haunted house, haunted house. What do you see? I see a vampire. Good evening. If you have time, please join us for the annual Halloween dance party downstairs. Whoa!